Hi there. I wanted to make a quick video about drawing out an inverter with magic um, because I've seen some people do it on YouTube, but uh, it takes way too long. So um, I'm going to throw down a speed run challenge for seeing who can make the fastest um, inverter with magic um, with zero DRCs and afterwards you've got to extract it and simulate it. So this is my process. I'm a beginner, so I'm probably doing lots of things in a non-efficient way. Um, but I just thought I'd record this because um, it would have been really useful for me to see it um, a few weeks ago. So I've recorded myself doing it and now I'm going to talk through the process uh, and I've sped up the footage a um, couple of times. So I always turn on the grid, turn on snap to grid, often use the crosshairs. Now, because we're using this, this is for a Skywater 130 nanometer process and the gate uh, width has to be 150 nanometers because otherwise when you extract this later and simulate it, unless it's close enough to the model, um, you won't be able to do the simulation properly. So I've just, uh, I'm trying to draw the, um, the P side of the inverter here, the, the P channel MOSFET, and I've just dropped an N channel diffusion layer there. So that's why I had to um, delete it and go back. And now this is the uh, local inter interconnects layer, the blue stuff. Um, all this, all the white dots is DRC fails and you can see in the top um, taskbar of um, magic, the DRC count. That's just gone down to two because I've dropped the N well that provides the backing for this P channel. So another DRC error I've got here is this overhang. So one of the other DRC rules is that the, um, the gate, which is made from the polysilicon, has to overhang long enough around the diffusion layer. So because this is a P-side, we've got N-channel diffusion layer, so it's got to uh, hang over there a bit more. So um, I've got the same error on this side, but that's not a problem because I need to drop this down. So one thing I'm using a lot here is typing in what size of box I want to use to make sure I can get that 150 nanometers correctly. Now I'm doing the um, local interconnect to metal connections. There's DRC errors there, but when I create the metal, they go away. So we're back down to zero DRC errors. Now I'm going to create the um, uh, P diffusion contact. So that connects the P diffusion to the local interconnect. I just got an error there because it was too close to the edge. So make a different size, uh, middle click over the palette and we get there. So to repeat stuff, it's quite easy. You just um, select something new, middle click, and that copies it. Um, now I need to label this. So that's labeled VPR and labeling the N well as well here, labeled N well. So that's important when I extract, I'll have these um, labels that I can then use for the simulation. Okay, here's the um, incoming um, A input to the inverter. So this connects to the polysilicon and I need a local interconnect layer and then a, a polyconnect uh, that connects those two layers together and I'll label that A. And then here's the output. So I've got the top half done now. This is the P side. And then after I've labeled this, I'll do the um, N channel, which is below. And again, it's important, the size. So uh, the P channel width had to be a thousand um, nanometers and the N channel width has to be 650 nanometers. So I just type that in, make sure I get it right. And then I can middle click on the N diffusion to get that N layer there. Um, expand it a little bit to get, make it the top, the same as the top. Um, I've still got that DRC error with the polysilicon overhang on the bottom. So just extend that down a bit. And now I'm going to make the polysilicon, uh, no, the local interconnect to connect up that N channel. Um, do the same as the bottom. So now I'm just going to, oh, so I did a mistake there because I copied the uh, top contacts, but that also copied the um, N well underneath it, which I definitely don't want over here. Um, so now connect the, lay the metal and now I'm doing the uh, N um, contact. So this connects the local interconnect to the N diffusion layer. 
and then I'll label that uh, vground and I think that's it so save right let's see what we got then that's um, 1222 go back to the beginning so you start drawing here 12 13 so seven eight nine minutes so if you can draw a DRC free inverter in less than nine minutes then beat me so then um, just to sh now talk through how we extract uh, and do the simulation so everything is labeled um, and uh, actually DRC free isn't a necess necessity for doing um, an extraction that, that works with the simulation because all magic needs to do is know where the transistors are and how they're connected um, but this is loaded with the, the Skywater 130 nanometer rules so that we couldn't actually make this in the um, the Google Skywater ASIC process without satisfying the uh, DRC. So what I'm doing is I run extract so magic uh, then understands how what what is here so two transistors N and P and then connected together and then the, the ports that a, Y, ground and, and power, and then the N well, and the substrate. Um, and now I'm doing X to spice LVS. So that turns on a bunch of important things that um, magic needs to get right for the simulation to work, like the scale. Um, and you can model different um, levels of par uh, parasitics, like um, capacitance or resistance. So I'm just leaving all that uh, as default. So this isn't like a perfect simulation or anything. It's just showing the concept. And then you run X to spice, and then that is now made a spice file. So this is what I've got here. Um, let's just go back um, here. So this is my um, uh, simulation setup, which is just like some default stuff, which creates a, a pulse, uh, instantiates the inverter, sets up the power supplies and so forth and includes the Skywater Spice uh, library. So that gives us the models of the transistors. And then this is what I've just exported. So I'm going to copy those two lines and uh, paste them inside uh, here. So we've got, this is the width and the length of the gate for the N channel and the width and length of the gate for the P channel. And these are the labels that I made, and then they match up with this, which matches up with that, which matches up with this, so everything gets connected properly. Um, so then try to run the simulation, make sim, which uh, uh, fails to start with because um, I, didn't, I forgot to rename it. So my previous practice was inverter three, so change it to inverter four, run the simulation, and then here we go. So we've got the uh, incoming which is a the red is a so that's going from high to low and then you see the blue is the output and that goes from low to high so then what we could do is uh, measure this delay here and that would let us work out how fast things can work in the ASIC process but as I said this isn't a great simulation it doesn't take into account parasitics so to find out more about this um, join me on the Hackaday Remoticon zero to ASIC demo where I'm going to talk through and make a demo of how to get uh, everything you need to go from zero to ASIC um, at a very shallow level. So it's more to get an understanding of the processes involved, uh, the kinds of things that we've got available, the kinds of tools, uh, what you would need to learn if you're interested, kind of the sticking points, that kind of stuff. So you're definitely not going to be able to um, go zero to ASIC without a considerable amount of extra work. But the idea is to uh, give you an overview, uh, uh, kind of, open the door to this really exciting new process that's available to us now. Uh, so hopefully I'll see you then. Take care.